Hello everyone, the micro we're taking a look at today is the FUS Spartan version 3. My version 3? Well, I don't know. I never saw version 1. I never saw version 2. Did you? And oftentimes when you see something like this, kind of a brand you don't necessarily recognize, you just kind of glaze over it. I know I did initially, but I decided to take a flyer and give this a try, and I'm very happy that I did. Sometimes you find a diamond in the rough, and this is one of those diamonds. Now this is marketed as a 3 and 4S, and on 4S this is a ball of fun. It's got big pop, and I know, that'll surprise you. It's got push-on props, it's 1104, 5400 KV. How can it have all that much thrust and fun? Well, it does, and something else that's surprising is the price. This is only $85, and I've got a coupon code down below where you can get it under $80. It doesn't come with a receiver, you have to add your own there. But otherwise, for flight performance, and price, this is my quad of the year so far. But it's not perfect. We need to check it out. So let's get started. As I stated in the intro, it's running 1104, 5400 KV motors on GemFan 65 millimeter props. The all-in-one board is an F4 flight controller with a 20 amp ESC. The VTX is underneath this 3D print, kind of inside the frame, and it is a power switchable VTX from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. It comes with a Runcam Nano 2, and it just comes with this one sheet. That's it, no extras, no frills. And if you're wondering about this flight controller, it's the GF411 all-in-one 20 amp ESC. And I have one in my Hornet build. Seems to work just fine. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting 99 millimeters. Bottom carbon fiber plate looks to be 2.39 millimeters, or two and a half thick. And those skinny little arms are two and a quarter wide. It weighs 57 and a half grams. I flew it primarily on this GNB 450 milliamp 4S battery, which brings the weight up to 110 grams. I also flew it on this 530 milliamp 3S battery from Kodar, or Cotter, which makes the weight 100 and a half grams. Okay, so let's start out with the bat. There's noise in the video. You might be able to help that by putting a capacitor and you do have pretty good access to the battery pads. Back there, I don't think putting it out on the battery lead will help all that much. Your best results would come getting it as close to the flight controller as you can. It looks like there's some noise leaking through there. Uh, so that's something that you have to decide. Is that a deal breaker for you or not? Also, I believe these motors, they look like the old DIYS motors. Uh, you might have noticed the font that was used there on that print. If you need to go back and look, some of you guys that are long veterans, you might recognize the DYS font that they use. I think these are old DYS motors. And that brings me to another concern. What happens when you break one? Because you're going to break one. I mean, you can't go flying around and not break something in quads eventually. So those are my two big concerns. Uh, the other one is that it doesn't come with a receiver, and you kind of have to decide whether that's a deal breaker for you. Some people want the receiver, you know, don't want to get into the, their soldering iron. They don't want to do that. Uh, if you're a hobbyist and you like to do some soldering, which if you're in this hobby, you are going to have to do some soldering at some point, I would think. Otherwise, you're going to have to have a deep bank account to just be able to keep buying RTFs that already have receivers in them. I have enjoyed this a lot. And one of the other things, I forgot one thing, is the motors do get very warm. They don't get hot. They're not get too hot, in my opinion. They get don't get so hot that when you touch them, you think, whoa, I can't, you know, I can't hold on to these. I carried it around by the motors. It's just one of those things where if you touch a motor that's really warm or, or some say hot, it'll draw your attention to it. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Now, one of the things that I did, and we're going to have a close call during this uh, flight. Um, I, I don't want to spoil it. I want it to be a surprise. But we're going to have a very close call, and you might enjoy that. Oh! <laughs> that was crazy close. Anywho, uh, one of the things about hot motors, especially if you're not a, a grizzled veteran and you haven't experienced them before and flown through that, is that it can cause alarm. So one of the things I did, and it has been super hot, uh, somewhere between 95 and 98 degrees here, I flew 10 batteries six of which were 450 milliamp off. I was also experimenting with some 260 milliamp 4S batteries. So I threw 10 pack, I flew 10 packs back to 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 back, however many 10 times, about as quickly as I could, just to see if I could burn out the motor. So flying kind of like you see in this video and just going as fast as I could from battery to battery, which takes me approximately a minute I was setting up to record, but everything, once I do the first recording, is kind of set and ready to go. Unfortunately, I had one flight that I was just so over the moon with when I got done, and I found out the camera that I used to sit on the table to record the audio, kind of the, the pilot's ears, uh, the camera just shut off. It, it, it lost the recording entirely, and the, the camera is just an old cell phone, so uh, apparently it overheated, but the quad just kept running. Of course, whenever the motors get hot, you do lose some efficiency. 
but I am really surprised at how well this thing flew and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now it comes to you with a stock tune for Betaflight 4.1.1. It also has a smart uh, audio capable VTX, but they didn't set up the VTX tables, not to worry there. Uh, I created a JSON file and I'll have that link down in the video description down below so you can just load that and your VTX will work. I'm flying on 200 milliwatts right here. Uh, also, I did tweak out the tune just a touch, kind of a quick and dirty tune. So if you want to use the tune that you see in this flight video, I will have that CLI link down in the video description as well. Now, if you update beta flight and you come back to me and say, do you have a tune for this version and that version? The answer is probably going to be no. Uh, once I like something, I stick with it. And we do see here at the end of the flight, I did drain the battery too much and we come in well over three minutes. Generally, my flights, depending upon how I was flying, came in somewhere between three and a half to four minutes. Every once in a while, I'd get like 406, 408. And this is a 3S flight. You can tell by that voltage down in the bottom right. And I wanted to give you a sample of the 3S flight because maybe you don't have any 450 milliamp 4S batteries. And that is the battery I recommend. I think if you go much above that, it's going to get too weighty. And then you might end up with some prop flex especially in hard turns or in stops that could cause problems. But plus, if you use a heavier battery and you've got the tune that I've created for this, then you know all bets are off on how well that flies. My tune, I would say, is about 75% there. I do think it could be better. But 75%, in my opinion, for how I fly is pretty good. You know, if I were a pro pilot, I'd probably tune it in a little bit more. Um, the defaults that it comes with is better for 3S, and so that's what you'll see in the PID profile for the tune down below. I do wish it came with some extras, namely props. Um, I used the same props the whole time. I did have a couple crashes and I will show you those back at the desk at kind of a picture in picture. Uh, this last segment here is something I haven't done before I wanted to try on you. This is the camera, or it's actually a cell phone, that I use to synchronize what we hear when we're flying with the DVR, because the DVR does not have audio in it. And I just happened to, on accident, click on one of these and start to watch it a little bit. It was I wasn't necessarily watching it. I was doing other things, but I noticed that was playing. And I thought it was fairly interesting, as you can see and, and hear the quad as it's moving around in that direction. And I just wanted to know if this is of value to you in any way, or is it something that you enjoy? Just a quick little segment, and you get to see the quad and, and see how it's flying through the air. Of course, it's a micro. It's 99 millimeters motor post to motor post. Thankfully, it's red, so it kind of sticks out in that view, and the lighting's fairly decent. So you get to see that. I just wondered if that would be something you're interested in. So let's take another look at these motors here and see, uh, do you guys agree? BE1104, 5400 kV, I think those are DYS motors. Um, and that's my concern is, you know, how do we get more of these motors? Because DYS is not in business anymore. Is somebody else making motors for them and they look like it? I don't know. But again, we have a very low price with this quad. It's going to be about $78, and then you need to add a receiver. Maybe you've got one of your own you're, you can add in there. And I did use an RXSR, and it does already come pre-soldered with your leads. These leads right down here, these are for your receiver down here. We've got uh, negative power, and then SBUS is the, the fourth one over here. And I did fit an RXSR inside there. You can kind of see it down there below the camera. It does have the connector. The connector is back here. So, of course, the antennas loop back here, and then they come up through here. You see one of my antennas is kind of shoving out there. That's probably due to one of my crashes. I probably tumbled a little bit and caused that to, to poke out a touch. But that's that's part of flying quads. I think the canopy that they used is, is pretty good print. I was really surprised at the quality of the print. You know, it, it it's very clean. I mean, it's better than most prints that I've seen on my desk. So that one made me pretty happy. Also back here at the VTX, it's got a nice tight little holder. This isn't surprising. We've seen this before. This clip down here does essentially nothing, um, but it's there. I mentioned in the flight video how you could put a capacitor or a cap 
down here. Uh, you can have access to the pads right here, so you wouldn't necessarily have to take your uh, canopy off in order to get that on there. But I think if you're taking the canopy off and you want to try to eliminate a little bit of that noise you saw in the VTX, this would be the place that I would install it. You know, you, those capacitors, by default, they got really long leads. Let's see, make sure I put it on here right. So stripe side is the negative. So I would, I would still trim some of this off. We got plenty we could reach and we could put that cap right in there. Uh, I would get it as close as I could, you know, down into the, the, the components. I don't want it out here waggling around on its end. But you can definitely get this uh, mounted up in there pretty easily and without taking off your canopy. If you're careful enough, we have solder pads exposed on both sides, if you can see that. Uh, my other concern that I didn't get to mention during the flight video is the frame. How long is it going to last? Uh, hopefully up here you've been watching uh, some other flights and you, if you pay attention up there you'll see some crashes up there as well. Of course all crashes are different and you may find that your crashes happen and break. Of course my crashes it did not break. Um, but again I, one of the reasons why I think this is such a good value and it's my quad of the year is that it's so inexpensive and it performs so well. Maybe you buy two. So you got all the parts as a backup. So when, you know, if you're a, a thrasher and a basher, maybe you buy two and you've got backup parts that you can hang on to. This board, we know we can get by itself. The VTX looks very familiar. It looks a lot like the Geelang VTX, but I can't say that for certain. Uh, it's buried underneath here, which is one of the things that's kind of an odd choice. Of course, as I said in the flight video, they set the port or the UART up for smart audio. It runs Tramp, but they didn't They didn't do it the VTX table. So I did that. I've got a JSON file down below. If you're not familiar with that, in order to power switch from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts and be able to manipulate the channels that you're flying on or the frequencies you're flying on, you use smart audio through your OSD. Uh, you're looking in the goggles and you use your radio to manipulate what you see on screen to make the value changes that you want. Without that set up, it doesn't work. So you can use the CLI dump that I've got my tune in, or you can do your own tune and download the JSON file that I've got down below. I also, I didn't get around to mentioning it and trying to be a little bit more detailed. I think eventually I would probably end up tearing this print off. Um, and all it's doing is securing this strap. Every time, let me just put a battery on and I'll show you what it looks like when I put a battery on. So this is what it looks like when I put a battery on. And you can see I'm putting some strain on that screw head right there. Of course, I've been doing this for a couple of weeks or, well, at least two weeks. It's hard to remember when these things come in. So at least two weeks, I've been doing this on a daily basis where I strap in a battery like this. Sometimes it might be the 3S version, but in general, it's this battery because I enjoy it so much. So I'm I'm kind of worried, especially if you are, you know, get a little rugged with something, you might pull this through. It's not a big deal, in my opinion, because then you just to go to the rubber band style. You know, where you put it over an arm and you twist it, and you put it over another arm and you twist it, you put it over another arm, you end up with an X in here, and you just use the rubber band to hold your battery on. I know that's not ideal for a 450. Just get a thicker rubber band. It'll probably actually save you weight because this, this TPU is pretty thick, and you can see there's quite a bit of it, so you'll have the ability to save a little bit of weight if you were to go to the rubber band style. I use some uh, Umagret light. That's the real thin stuff down here to make sure my battery's stuck. You can see it's kind of dirty. Eh, it doesn't stick stick all the way anymore. And then I threaded it through there. You don't necessarily have to, and I don't think they necessarily intended for me to do that, but I wanted to make sure I had a firm grip on my battery. I really don't like it when my battery gets ejected. And in my crashes, I did not have a battery ejection, but it did shift forward but not forward enough to where it really put a true tension on this. So while I've got some complaints about it, it's hard for me to do anything other than to recommend it. Uh, I'm not one to necessarily, you know, do clickbaity titles or say, you know, it's quad of the year, but after flying this and having so much fun and then thinking about being able to purchase it for under $80, it's really, really hard to beat. I, I can't think of the last time we had a quad with this sort of performance come in at this price point. Anywhere close. Now, I hope that the price stays there. And I'm going to work on getting a different coupon that might last longer. The coupon I've got down there below probably only lasts about two weeks. So you don't have too long to choose. I'm going to try to get a coupon that'll last a little bit longer. Because I do think this is fun. And I do think others should have it. And I'm surprised. Oh, I should mention the carbon fiber. For these skinny little arms. It's pretty dang, pretty dang stiff. Like, uh, I've got a... 
uh, toothpick over here, a baby tooth, which much thicker as far as width goes. I would say this is just as stiff, if not possibly a touch stiffer. And I think that's part of the magic, is the fact that there's very little wind resistant. It's a light quad. It's running 4S. It's pretty much all prop. It just performs really well. I need to stop talking. If you do want to check it out, there's a link down in the video description down below. Let me know what you think of that segment where we just kind of watch the quad fly with that camera view. What you think of this quad. What you think of the price point. What do you think of the video that I put together? Anything I missed? Something I glossed over and didn't make a big enough point of? Leave your information down below. A lot of you are experienced pilots and you see things that maybe others might miss or maybe I missed it as well. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.